EP1100, Data Communication and Computer Networks. In this part, I will go over some terminology, standardization, and layered network models. Some illustrations are collected from the book by Forosan, Data Communications and Networking, published by McGraw-Hill. Here I've selected five words of useful terminology for this course. We have system, architecture, model, layering, and protocol. A system is a collection of things or elements that working together produce a result not achievable by the things alone. Architecture. It's the fundamental organization of a system embodied in its components, their relationship to each other, and to the environment and the principles guiding its design and evolution. So we see that the architecture contains a list of components and how they're connected together, but it also specifies the environment. For instance, whether communication systems should be used indoors or outdoors, perhaps even underwater. And interestingly enough, it also includes the principles for the design, so that even though components change, they might be connected differently together, the architecture could remain the same because there are principles guiding how it should evolve. Model has a simple definition. It's an abstracted representation of some aspect of a system. This means that when we want to study a system, we don't have to include everything that's not relevant for the study we want to make. For instance, if we want to study the performance of a system, we don't have to include the technology, perhaps, that, that the system has been built of. Layering. Layering is a non-hierarchical ordering of system functions, where lower layer provides a service to a layer above. We will see examples of that later. A protocol is a set of rules governing the format of messages that are exchanged between computers. We are now ready to reason about communication systems. Communication networks are collaborative systems. The component systems are systems in their own right. For instance, the computers that are connected together by a network are fully functional computers. But the interaction of component systems provide functions not provided by any of the components alone. This is sometimes called systems of systems. The component system must be able to interact as desired, irrespective of who has manufactured the system, the interior structure of the system, and the realization of technology. So for instance, computers from different manufacturers, using, based on different processors and running different operating systems, should be able to communicate together. This interoperability is ensured by standards and we require that two systems that follow the same standardized rules should function together. It's also important that the rules can be verified by the manufacturer who produces the system so that it knows that its system will function together with all other systems that are manufactured by others. Standards are defined by public organizations and then referred to as de jure standards or by widespread use called de facto standards. We talk about open standards, which means that the ready standard specifications are, are public and that the standardization process is open to anyone with the possibility to propose, criticize, and influence the standards. There are many standardization organizations. Some of the more important ones are listed here. We have the International Organization for Standardization, International Telecommunication Union, the Internet Engineering Task Force, and the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. There are regional institutes such as ETSI and ANSI, industry associations, and various commissions that are pertaining to certain parts of a system, but not all of it. Standardization. In order to standardize a system, we must model it. We need to abstract some part of a system. It's often limited to the functional aspects of, of the system. So we define what functions should be performed and in what order they should be performed. We should not limit how the system can be realized. We should standardize what it should do, not how to do it. So that when new technology comes, or when new, better solutions are found to functions, they can be incorporated into the standards and not render them obsolete. The model that we use for communication system is based on the layering. Communication systems are complex. They have many different functions that interact with each other. So we separate the functions into protocol layers. For each layer, we specify what functions it should perform, and we specify interfaces between the layers for the interaction of the functions. The layers are independent modules, so you can modify a layer without influencing the function of the layer above or the layer below. Example of layered communication models is the Open System Interconnection by ISO or the Internet Protocols by ITF. 
Here is an example of a laid model of regular mail. The sender has written a letter. If the letter is put in an envelope with the correct address and sufficient postage and put in a mailbox, the sender can be sure that the letter will be delivered to the mailbox of the receiver. The sender does not have to be concerned how the delivery is happening. The middle layer is the post office function. The post office empties the mailboxes in its district, sorts it according to receiving post office, and carries the mail containers to a carrier. It does not have to be concerned about how the carrier is delivering the mail to the receiving post office, whether by train or, or by trucks. On the receiving side, mail is delivered by the carrier to the post office. The post office opens the containers, sorts the mail according to receiving mailbox, sends out mailmen to deliver letters, and the receiver will find the letter in its mailbox.